the armchair traveler stories that I've done, I never thought we'd have to go back 12 million years to find an interesting story. Come with me and I'll show you why this is a really unique feature. We're talking with someone who, if I may say so, really looks like a museum type, and that is because he is a museum type. We're talking to a very distinguished gentleman here called Hal Thomas. Tell us exactly where you're from and what you're here for. I'm from the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, and I'm here to pick up this sperm whale skull that was found here on Chadwick School. When you first got the message about this, I mean, what were your first thoughts? Well, I got the message to come up here and identify some fossils. And I thought, okay, you know, there's fossils up here, so I can go do that, that's what I do, it's really fun, I love it. So I came up here and looked at some vertebrae and some ribs of some various whales, and then Martin showed me this skull. I took one look at it and said, that's a very important skull, it needs to come to the museum. How did, <laughs> how did you know that it was, I mean, when you say you looked at it and you knew it was what you just said it was, that takes a lot of intelligence and sort of perception to realize that. Well, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I've seen a lot of bones, I've seen a lot of skulls, and what we're trained to do is look at a rock and kind of identify what's showing and try and figure out what it is just by what's showing on the outside of the rock. So we're trained to do that. Ted, this must have been an extraordinary moment for you when you realized what was discovered. Well, it's, uh, it's rare that a K-12 through school gets to actually add to the body of knowledge that's uh, in the scientific community, so we're thrilled with this opportunity that's actually been sitting here under, <laughs> right under our eyes for many, many years. I think it was 12 million. Uh, it, uh, quite, a, quite a while ago and under some water at that point, but we're, we're thrilled to be able to help in some small way. This certainly gives uh, Chadwick a huge amount of, uh, I don't know, notoriety, publicity. I mean, it's an incredible find. Well, it is, and I guess it, for our students, it, it opens their eyes to the fact that there are things all around them that, that maybe they should be taking note of, and there's so many wonderful scientific questions to be asking about everything that's uh, around us in Los Angeles. How wonderful that your students can actually participate in something like this. Well, it's going to be, this is only the beginning, so it's going to be really exciting as the museum does its work and uncovers and, and finds out what exactly this is, and our students will be able to ask them questions and actually watch the scientific method unfold. So then they can go uh, field trips to the museum, right, to sort of follow up the whole thing at the museum? Well, they can certainly do that. We can also email back and forth. The museum's been kind enough. They're going to provide us with a plaster cast of the fossil once it's uncovered. So our students are going to be able to have an ongoing dialogue with the scientists at the museum that I think is going to be a really a rare opportunity. We're talking with Martin Beihauer, the <laughs> gentleman who uh, discovered this. How exactly did you discover it? Well, we have these really cool fossils that we walk by every day uh, here on campus and as a past. We meaning you and all these students. All the students and all, and all the faculty. Uh, some walk by and don't notice it. Others have been noticing them and I've been wondering about them for a long time. And the whole thing, the, the thing that scientists do is they look at things and they wonder. And my curiosity got the best of me because I knew these were whale fossils but I wanted to know a little bit more about them and uh, particularly this one that we've discovered that's really special. I had no idea what I was looking at. When you, you know, light must have gone on in your head and you said, wow, I mean, did it suddenly just hit you like that? Well, you know, it was, it took me quite a while. I wanted, I decided it's been, it was kind of like bubbling underneath for quite a while. And then I uh, said, you know, we really got to find out. And it took me quite a while to find somebody like Hal Thomas, find the right person to come out here and have a look. And now I'll bet that there's a lot of scientists who are kind of envious that he was the one who, who came out and looked at this thing and within seconds could say, not only is this a sperm whale, but it is a, sp a species of sperm whale unknown to science. How did you feel about discovering something that was not one, not two, but 12 million years old? <laughs> well, most fossils are about that old, or are or, or often older, as well as younger. So I, I wasn't surprised about that. I was surprised that it's right here in our P Altamira Shale PV stone from when this was like 12, millions, uh, 12 million years ago, and this whole area was underwater. This was before Palos Verdes. Wait, wait, wait. wait. 
you were we were underwater 12 million years ago <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, fortunately, even if all the polar ice caps, all the ice caps melt, we'll still not be underwater again because PV rose up. But yeah, the, the continents move around, and there was a, due to uh, the Pacific plate hitting the North American plate, and maybe a little squeezing another little plate, the Farallon plate in between, got shoved down, and what goes down must come up, and that's where PV was created. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, many of our audience looking at this wonder who all these people are behind you. Who are they? <laughs> well, they're students who happen to have a free period, number one, <laughs> um, and they're also, most of them are former seventh grade students of mine, so uh, um, it's kind of cool that the kids are able to be involved in this too, because this is what I really want to do. What, a, what, a, what science, scientists do is they look at the world around them and they notice things and then they wonder about those things and maybe look at them in new ways, and I think that's where all the great scientific discoveries have been made, by somebody looking at something and noticing it and then maybe thinking about it a different way and not settling until they get an answer. We're talking with Taylor, one of the students here. Um, I understand you know quite a bit about whales, so how did you feel when you heard about this? Oh, I thought it was so exciting. I mean, I've walked right past there a thousand times and never really thought too much about it. Did you actually look at it? I mean, to walk by something like that and then suddenly discover that it has what it has, did it surprise you and you want to go back and look at it again? Oh, absolutely. And as soon as I heard, I went back and looked at it. And you can really see, like, the outline of the skull. It's clear that something's in there, but I wouldn't have noticed on my own. What got you interested in, you know, studying this very sort of, to me, offbeat kind of thing? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've grown up here in the South Bay, right by the ocean, so that's always been a passion and an interest of mine to like learn more about what's out there. Are you going to go to the museum and follow its progress? I hope so. We're looking at obviously a whale on the bottom, at least assume that's a whale, and some, <laughs> some rocks. So could you tell our viewers what we're looking at? Certainly. This is a drawing of what this particular sperm whale could have looked like. This is a drawing of a whale that was found in Bakersfield at 15 million years old. This one's about 10 to 12 million years old, so it wouldn't be exactly the same, but it'd be similar to this. This is the rock we're picking up today, and you can see, or I can see, skull pieces up here and here, and I drew in what the skull would probably look like, or something similar. The eyeballs would be under this and this, the blowholes would be here, here's the back of the skull, here's the front of the skull. It would go out to about here in life, but because it's in a rock and the rock is broken, the snout is missing. It's probably my British sense of humor, but I'm so glad you said, I can see when you looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see it, yeah. You've been doing this sort of stuff for how many years and what got you interested in this very expert field? Well, that's a long story, but I'll try to shorten it. Uh, I was interested in marine biology. I lived in Hawaii and I was doing a lot of scuba diving. So I got into marine biology as an interest and then got into school for marine biology and then went from there into paleontology, marine paleontology. And I've always just loved whales and marine mammals in general. So that's where it comes from. I guess one final question. When I look at that, it is obviously a rock. How come the part of the whale got embedded in a rock? Ah, when it was embedded, this wasn't rock. This was soft ocean bottom sediments. Wow. Over the years, over 10 million years, it became much, much harder over time. And now it's a rock. Over 10 million years, obviously you can't wait around for oh, no, no. something like this to happen. No. It takes far too long for most human beings. Right, correct. What got you interested in this particular project? Well, quite frankly, I'm very interested in sciences and paleontology. So, of course, it being a fossil, I was very keen to look more into it. Could you see where the whale was or was it very hard to figure out? Well, there are other parts in the rock that have more distinct like fossils, such as a vertebrae, and that was easier to spot at first. But I think the fossil, the reason why it's everyone is so excited is because it's so it was so hard to find at first. And I think Mr. Bo when Mr. Beihauer found it was very important. I think the fact that you all walked by it so often and then suddenly, you know, you, wow, that's incredible. And yeah, I guess I feel, I've, I mean, I feel happy right now, but I guess I feel miffed because I could have, it could have been earlier, I could have really... You could have discovered it. <laughs> yeah, I could have discovered it, I wish, that would have been nice. 
I guess the thing that occurs to me and a must do to many of our viewers, how come it's remained hidden for so many millions of years? Well, it was in the ground for millions and millions of years. And when they built the school, they uncovered all of these fossils that are on the property here. And then for 77 years, they, people at the school knew there were fossils, but they didn't know what they were. Does that mean that underneath and all around here there could be a lot more of this? No, that means there is a lot more of this. Oh, there is. Yeah. <laughs> not could be, but is. And maybe not more of the sperm whale, but more fossils, certainly. And when it gets to the museum, what exactly are you going to do? I will, what is called, prepare it. I will You'll clean, prepare it? I will prepare it. <laughs> and what that means is I will prepare it for the curators to do their research. So I will clean it. I'll take the rock away from the bone. Finally, I don't want to put words in your mouth, which I am, but is this, is this what you could call a significant find? In our world, this is a significant find. It's probably a new genus of animal. Um, it's unusual in its size. It's very small. When I saw that, I knew it was a sperm whale, but it, didn't, it wasn't the right size. It was much too small. Of course, if someone's watching and they're going to say small, how small is small? Well, sperm whales are a large animal. And so a small skull, one being this size, is probably a foot and a half long, maybe wow. two feet long, where it should be eight feet long. Okay. So that's small. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you very kindly. You're very welcome. Okay, 12 million years, and this is the end of the line. Now it is off to the Natural History Museum. What a wonderful ending for a fabulous whale found in a rock at Shadwick School, right here on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Until next time, this is John Clayton.